Hi, I'm Greg, and welcome to my shed. Um, I've got a little job for the tool and cutter grinder it's sitting here in the background. Um, what I've got to do is I've got to sharpen a heap of these up. And we've got a large one here, we've got a smaller one there. Hopefully that'll focus. It's a bit hard to tell. And there's a to do these. <coughs> there's a few angles in each one of them. I'll use the bigger one. This angle here, as you can see, is not 90 degrees. Then there's an angle from this face across the top here. Oh, okay. From this face across the top, there's an angle down to here. And then there's the final bevel cutting angle on the edge. Now, when you look at that, that's a nice straight edge. These are meant to be nice straight edges. There's rotary blades that light, that operate um, through here above these. Um, these are out of vegetable processing machines. And so what we want to do is we want to dress these back. Um, my client has, or well, has had, they threw out 70 kilograms of these. <laughs> um, 70 kilos. Oh, when I say they threw it out, they got a little bit, they got a few cents for scrap. Um, because they were told they weren't stainless steel. Um, funny thing about stainless steel is that it has iron in it and Lo and behold, iron is actually magnetic. So if you put a magnet on stainless, it generally it sticks. And the um, salvage yard said to him, no, mate, it's, um, it's magnetic, so it can't be stainless. <laughs> um, so yeah, anything that has iron in it will have a degree of magnetism in it. Yeah, the degree will change, um, depending on what amount of iron it has in it. But just because it's got iron it doesn't mean that it's not stainless and stainless comes in many grades but anyway what we're going to do is I've got a lump of uh, 50 by 25 or um, 2 inch by 1 inch in round, num in round imperial numbers um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start off by facing that in the uh, probably in the shaper I think, we might give it a bit, knock a bit of the rust off it and then we'll face it in the shaper um, and then we'll start cutting something so that we can mount this in here at an angle something like that um, mount it in there at an angle and then we'll be able to stick that on the uh, on the table and we'll just be able to slide them up and down nice and quick one after another and but they'll all be the same we'll be able to do them in families um, little families big families um, I've got about a mill of material that I can take off the edge maximum so we, there's a limited number of sharpens out of them but uh, with a bit of luck uh, it should work out and uh, there obviously there's enough money in it and there's uh, they're expensive enough to justify uh, trying to get uh, a couple of lives out and maybe three lives we'll see how we go um, incidentally this might be two three or maybe even four videos we'll see how we see how many we end, need to finish it with I'll turn you off now I'll come back later okay just before we start I thought I'd show you the setup this here's the bar that I want a machine. What I've done is I've got two blocks clamped to the table. I've got an end stop and then what I've done is I've come around here and there's another use in the world for T-nuts and that's clamped to the end of the table so it's squeezed across get it in short so it's squeezed across it's been hit down with the uh, dead blow hammer um, I've got a rough set up on it, we're touching it either end so we've got a nice little bow in here I've selected it this way because I wanted the bow first um, we'll machine the bow out 
Then what I'll do is I'll flip it over 180 degrees so the machine faces down, and then what we'll do is we'll take that face off. Um, so we'll get into it once we're doing a bit of cutting. She does tend to move a bit. We should really get some casters with some brakes on it. Got a pretty serious roughing cut going on here at the moment for this machine anyway. Um, looks like we're gonna have to take a second cut. It's not quite getting it about 30, 40 mil back. An you know, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, you know. So, uh, yep. This bit of material is pretty mediocre anyway. It's uh, this piece of mild steel and it's been in the, um, it's been heated up to red hot a couple of times. So, uh, we're not expecting to get a particularly good finish out of it anyway. It's just a piece of hot roll mild steel. So, uh, yep. What I've done is I've just stopped it part way through here so that to try and give you a bit of an idea of the the bow that's in this piece of material as you might be able to see by where my finger is that there would be getting close to this is me coming out of shot because of the freehand that's about one mil it's hardly touching here in the center and it's probably half a mil We'll get it back in a shot. This lip here up the front here is probably half a mil. This lip down the back here is probably getting close to one mil. And this bit in the centre here, well, it's thickness of the rust. <laughs> so it's hardly touching. So um, if you're wondering why. I'm doing it with this. I'd rather do use a bit of cheap high speed steel than uh, check, tear up a uh, perfectly good milling cutter. Um, once we get it cleaned up, then we'll go to the mill, but let's clean it up on this. This will be the last cut on this side. It's about 20 thou or half a millimetre. As you can see, those chips are just coming off beautifully. Just changed from the roughing tool to the shear tool for the finishing cut, and you can see the difference in the finish um, and the very different chip shape. I measured the other chips up, they were 0.45 millimeters, which is about 18 thou. Um, Probably this angle gives you a bit better idea. So, uh, yeah, alright. I'll come back uh, after I've got it turned over, and, uh, or at least after I've progressed a bit more anyway. Okay.